Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsip and we will be talking about the spatial relationships and identifying the viscera of the internal pelvis. And we have much to do here, so let's get right into it. Okay, I always, always like to look at a hemisection when discussing visceral relationships in the internal pelvis. So just to review, a hemisection is formed by a sagittal cut, this time as close to the midline as possible to form a right and a left hemisection. We are looking here at an internal view of the left hemisection of the pelvis. And the reason we anatomists like to start with these views is that it allows us to view all of the structures in the, pel the pelvic cavity, whereas with a superior view or a posterior view, often you can only see um, some of the, the more superior structures and not really able to see the deeper structures. I always also like to start with the osteology or the bones, um, just because they help me get oriented and organized as to what is anterior and what is posterior. So you can see where the pubic symphysis is located right here. So that gives you an idea that this is going to be the anterior portion. And you can see portions of the sacrum here I'm outlining, obviously it's been cut, so you can look into the kind of spongy bone portion. You can even see a bit of the coccyx right here. And so now we know that this is mo mostly posterior. Now, if, you, if we're gonna start anterior, just behind the pubic symphysis is the urinary bladder, which is right here. Um, and you can even see a little bit of the relatively short urethra kind of extending inferiorly from the bladder region. Just posterior to the bladder is the uterus in this individual. So uh, the th of the three major visceral structures in this region, the uterus is always going to be intermediate. So right here, um, we are talking the body of the uterus. We'll come back to this in a bit more uh, detail in a moment. Now I want to look at the structures kind of up in this area, um, as I think these are a little bit trickier. This is going to be the internal iliac artery. We'll talk more about that in the uh, vasculature uh, video, and you can see the numerous branches throughout. This structure right here, running between the internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery over here, so this structure that I'm outlining is actually going to be the ureter. So the ureter, is, and you can see it running between these two, these two arteries, and you can see it kind of diving uh, more laterally to head towards the bladder. So it's going in the right direction. So pretty good idea that that's gonna be the ureter there. Extending laterally, from the uterus, you are going to have the uterine tube, which I'm just kind of outlining in this general region here. You can actually see where I'm kind of circling right here, the infundibulum portion, which you can see a bit of those kind of fringed outline back here, which are part of the fimbriae of the infundibulum of the uterine tube. Also, you can see the ovary right here. So very close approximation to the uterine tube and to those fimbriae and, ex and not too far from the uterus. Returning to the uterus, so as I mentioned, this larger portion that I've already outlined, this is going to be referred to as the body of the uterus. And the inferior third of the uterus is called the cervix. So this is the cervix portion or the cervical portion of the uterus. And right here, you can see the vagina. So this kind of muscular tube region right here, you can see the vagina will actually, ex the superior portion of the vagina will surround the portion of the cervix that protrudes into the vagina. So this general region that I'm gonna outline is going to be the vagina. Lastly, the most posterior visceral structure, um, 
before you get down and past the pelvic diaphragm will be the rectum. And as you get to the pelvic diaphragm, this will transition into the anal canal. We'll talk more about that when we get to the perineal portion of uh, the, the curriculum. Okay, excellent. I love this view. I promise you will likely see some practical questions in this hemisection view. But let's take it some of, uh, look at some of these visceral structures in other views as well. So this is a superior view on an individual with a uterus. Uh, the uterus is going to be located right here. It is the fairly dominant structure, but it's also covered with peritoneum. As you can see here, the broad ligament is extending on either side of the uterus towards the lateral pelvic wall. The uterine tubes are going to be superior and extending laterally. So the uterine tubes on either side. Um, it's going to be covered with peritoneum, as you can see here, specifically the mesosalpinks of the broad ligament. And you can see portions of the uterine tube. Um, you can see the infundibulum kind of stretching out into this region. And you can see the fimbriae that are going to be associated with that distalmost portion of the infundibulum. And right at the end of the distalmost portion is going to be the abdominal ostium, which would be right in this region. You can't really see the opening very well in this image, but that is where the uterine tube is actually opening um, into the abdominopelvic cavity. And you can, see a little, you can see the ovary right here on the left side as well. So again, very closely associated with the uterine tube into those fimbriae uh, of the infundibulum. So you have the uterus, the uterine tubes, and the ovaries. They are going to be intermediate in place in the pelvic cavity. The bladder is always going to be anterior. And usually it's difficult to see in a superior view as it is covered um, by quite a bit of peritoneum. Um, sometimes you'll have a little bit of fat associated with it, but it's going to be deep uh, to this general area right here. And the rectum will be posterior. You can see a bit of it here. It's been tied off in this dissection. Um, but generally, um, without anything removed, the uterus, the broad ligament, is going to be fairly dominant in this view. All right, let's talk internal bladder structures. Obviously, you can only see these internal structures if you've made an incision into the bladder and portions reflected in order to better view it, um, which is certainly what has happened here. In fact, some of the superior bladder has been removed. This whole general region is actually the bladder. It's been opened um, quite large in order to see the internal views. Um, and to get our bearings right here is going to be the uterus. You can see extension over here. That's gonna be the uterine tubes. Now, right here, I'm going to circle them. You can see these tiny slit-like openings which are your ureteric orifices. So your, your ureteric orifices where the um, ureters are entering the bladder. And in close proximity, and generally a little bit larger and more in the midline, is going to be the internal urethral orifice. And when you kind of connect these regions, this forms the trigon of the bladder. All right, last view of internal pelvic visceral relationships with an emphasis right now with individuals who have a uterus present. Um, and we're gonna focus a little bit more on this image on the parts of the uterine tubes. So this is the uterus here, and you can see the broad ligament um, is extending laterally to the pelvic wall. So the broad ligament is this whole general area right here. The superior most portion of the broad ligament is going to be referred to as the mesosalpinx, and this is what's actually covering the uterine tube. So the superior most portion of the broad ligament is actually covering almost all the, the surfaces of the uterine tube. The lateral most portion of the uterine tube is the infundibulum. So I'm just gonna kinda label it in its general area. There's no really clear demarcations. Um, but it is going to be the distalmost portion. 
You will have the fimbriae, which you can see kind of extending all over the place in this general region. And the portion of the infundibulum that opens into the abdominopelvic cavity is the abdominal ostium, which is not very clear here, but it would be in this general area. So this whole general complex right here is part of the infundibulum. The ampulla is the longest portion of the tube. This is generally where fertilization will occur if it does. And then the isthmus is going to be the portion of the uterine tube that begins to narrow and is close to the uterus. And like I mentioned, there are no clear demarcations between these parts. The ovary will be near the infundibulum portion of the uterine tube, and you can see that the fimbriae are very, um, or relatively close to the ovary as well. All right, excellent, great work so far working through these structures with me. Now, let's take a look at a hemisection of an individual assigned male at birth. So let's find those osteological structures I told you to find first in a hemisection. So here is the anterior pubic symphysis, right here, and posterior, you're going to have the sacrum and the coccyx back here. So sacrum and coccyx, so we know this is posterior, we know we're looking more anteriorly here. Uh, just of note, the penis is not considered part of the internal pelvic viscera, but you can clearly see um, the penis in this image and the erectile tissues that uh, help compose the penis. So this is penis right here. And back to the pubic symphysis, as always, just behind the pubic symphysis, you're going to have the urinary bladder. And you can see the ureter. Let me outline the ureter real quick. Again, traveling between the internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery on its way towards the bladder. Inferior to the bladder is going to be the prostate gland. And this is, it's difficult to differentiate in this particular individual uh, where the bladder ends and the prostate begins. It may have to do with where the incision or the cut actually occurred. Um, but just note that the prostate is always going to be inferior. And superior to the prostate gland, um, are, and kind of um, more posteriorly placed, are the ampulla of ductus deferens and the seminal gland. The ductus deferens, and this ampulla is just kind of the wider portion of the ductus deferens, is always going to be more superiorly placed. So ductus deferens. And then the seminal gland, sometimes you hear this referred to as the seminal vesicle, is going to be more, in, or more inferiorly placed in comparison to the ductus deferens. And where they join together, this forms the ejaculatory duct. And the ejaculatory duct will deposit contents from um, the vas deferens as well as the seminal gland into the prostatic urethra. Lastly, you see just a little bit of the rectum here. The majority of the rectum has been removed in this dissection, but as always, the rectum is more posteriorly placed, so close to the sacrum and the coccyx, and it's right at the level of the pelvic diaphragm that you get the transition to the anal canal. This is another image of the internal bladder, but with different surrounding visceral structures, in particular, the seminal gland, which remember is going to be more inferiorly, um, excuse me, the seminal gland is going to be more inferiorly placed, and the ductus deferens, which remember when we get towards this region, kind of right behind the bladder, it will dilate, forming the ampulla. So you can even see kind of traveling the ductus deferens, and then it extends into the ampulla. You can see the same thing over here, extending into the ampulla of the ductus deferens. Recall the ductus deferens um, will travel within the spermatic cord and the scrotum in the inguinal canal before making its own way towards this region. You don't really have a seminal gland um, very clear here, but it would be in this general region. So ductus deferens, ductus deferens, and then the seminal glands. 
Now, uh, the prostate would be a, a bit more inferior to the bladder here, so we don't see it quite well in this image. The bladder, similar to what we saw in um, the other image, has been incised with some of the superior portion removed. You can see the two ureteric orifices right here and right here, and the larger, more midline internal urethral meatus uh, or orifice right here. And so where these kind of join will be referred to as the trigon of the bladder. Now in individuals with a prostate gland, the prostatic median lobe will create an elevation in the internal urethral orifice, which is called the uvula. So kind of right in this region, there'll be kind of a bump that you wouldn't see in an individual that does not have a prostate gland. Like I said, this is referred to as the uvula of the bladder. If the uvula is hypertrophied, this can obstruct the flow of urine. Lastly, I wanted to talk through this really excellent dissection and focus on this posterior view of the prostate and associated structures. So to get our bearings, most of the posterior bony structures have been removed as well as the rectum to get a closer view of this region. You can see a bit of where the pelvic diaphragm muscles are located. And probably the, the most obvious structure in this dissection is going to be the prostate or the prostate gland. You can see a bit of the bladder right here as well, just to kind of get your bearings. So the prostate, of course, is going to be inferior. That's why it's a harder structure to see other than in um, purely posterior views, posterior inferior views, or in say hemisections. So that's why I wanted to look at this image as well. You can see um, the more inferiorly placed seminal gland. You can't see it quite as well here. It'd be in this general region. And then you have the ductus or vas deferens on either side here and here, the ones that I've outlined there. And where these two meet, so kind of in this general area, will be the ejaculatory ducts. And so you'll have one on either side, and those ejaculatory ducts will um, drain into the prostatic urethra. Excellent, we have gone through quite a bit of material here, but that makes sense as there is quite a bit of viscera to discuss when we're talking about the internal pelvic viscera. Make sure to review these structures and please reach out with any questions you may have to me or any of my anatomy colleagues. Thank you for your time and attention and have a great day.